Most traders stare at the option chain without realizing that it hides one of the most powerful pieces of information for traders. This information is called option skew. If you understand it, you can tell a lot about where the market thinks the risk in the future is, to the upside or the downside, what the market thinks is most likely to happen next, and you can even find mispriced trades. So let's go over exactly what skew is and how you can use it to become a better trader for yourself. When you pull up an option chain, there's really two main dimensions. There is time and there is strikes. Both of these can be plotted. When you plot the strikes, what you are looking at is called the skew. And when you plot the days to expiration, what you're looking at is called the term structure. Now for both the skew and the term structure, there are these common shapes that you will see when you plot them. But both of these can also get distorted or change under certain market conditions. Skew, which is the one that we're going to focus on in this video, is all about the shape of implied volatility across different strikes. So in simple terms, what skew does is it describes to us how implied volatility changes as you move away from the at the money strikes. What you'll notice is there's actually drastic changes as you go further away from the at the money strikes. And this unevenness of the pricing across strikes tells us a lot about what the market thinks about the future. To really understand how skew works, we need to start with an understanding of how distributions work. A normal distribution, or the classic bell curve distribution, assumes symmetrical probabilities. In the stock market, if you saw a bell curve shaped distribution, what it would mean is that the likelihood of small up moves versus small down moves is equivalent, and the likelihood of big up moves and big down moves is also equivalent. The mean, the median, and the mode would all line up. But real markets are not symmetrical, and we can figure this out without even looking at a distribution. If I told you that the market moved 10% today, do you think that that move was more likely to be to the upside or to the downside? Well, logically, we know that the market goes up like an escalator and then down like an elevator, elevator being that huge move. So if the market moved 10% in a single day, I'd be willing to bet that it was a move to the downside more likely than not. And just knowing this means the distribution we see when we plot the frequency of moves for a stock tends to be a skewed distribution. The mode or the most frequent return is actually skewed slightly to the upside. It would not be zero, it'd be slightly above zero. But then the mean gets pulled down a bit because of these really big down moves or this fat tail that we would see to the downside. And this distribution here is what leads to there being skew. We know that if there's going to be big moves, it's more likely to be to the downside. And so guess what happens to option pricing? When you look at an option chain for let's say the S&P, you'll notice that the out of the money puts tend to be more expensive than the out of the money calls. Because where are people buying options? Well, most people are hedging positions and that means that we will see them buying on the put side and especially out of the money puts a lot more than the call side. For example, at the money options could be 15% on the S&P right now. The out of the money calls might be trading at 12% and the out of the money puts might be trading at 18 or 20%. The out of the money puts are more expensive because the market assigns a greater risk to the downside than to the upside. And you can observe this for yourself by going to any option chain. Just go to the S&P, for example, as a starting point, SPY, and look at the implied volatility for the different strikes. You will actually see this for yourself. It's not a secret, it's not hidden, it's actually there for us to observe. And so now that you know what the skew kind of looks like and why it generally exists, when we go to read the skew or when we observe it, we're really trying to answer two primary questions. Question one is, where is the risk? And question two is, what is most likely to happen? The shape of the skew is what allows us to answer this question. If the out of the money puts are way more expensive than the out of the money calls, what this is telling you is that the risk is to the downside. Over the time period we're looking at, the market says if we're going to see an outsized move bigger than what's generally implied, it's likely to be to the downside. And the most likely move we're gonna see, in contrast to that, because the skew is shaped like this, the out of the money puts are more expensive than the out of the money calls. The most likely move is actually to the upside. On the flip side, let's say we saw what is called call skew, where we see the out of the money calls are more expensive than the out of the money puts. Well, in this case, we would actually be able to say that the risk is to the upside. There is a situation at hand right now where the market thinks if the stock's gonna have a big move, it's gonna shoot up like crazy. But realistically, the more likely thing is it stays the same or trends down a little bit. For the put skew, which we see in the S&P, for example, it's pretty obvious what would drive that. It's, it's the general risk associated with equities, which is goes up like escalator, but down like elevator. Call skew is something we see, for example, on a meme stock where everyone is bidding up the out of the money calls, betting that this stock is just going to go to the moon. The risk with a meme stock is that it quadruples in price. More likely than not, it's gonna go down over time. 
but the risk is to the upside and the skew informs us about that. Now there's other shapes that the skew can take as well. For example, it could look like a, a V for example, or a smile, which you might see during a biotech event where if the trial passes, then the stock goes up. If the trial fails, then the stock goes down a bunch. We just basically know it's not gonna stay at the same price for very long. But besides that and a couple other shapes, the reason this is important is because you don't need to agree with the skew. If you think that the shape of the skew is implying risk in the wrong way, you can actually take advantage of this and structure you know, a ratio spread or a, or a risk reversal, or you can do a fly, or there's so many structures that you can trade that take advantage of the skew, especially when you disagree with the way that it's structured. For example, if you think that it's more likely that a stock is going to trend up, but there's call skew, what you could do is you could structure an unbalanced fly into that call skew and get a lot of leverage if the stock just trends up. Let's say the market for some reason starts to imply a flatter skew, meaning calls and puts become a similar price on the S&P for some reason. It doesn't really happen, but just for example, what you could do there is you could buy the puts and sell the calls and then as the skew reverts, you start to make money because we know it should go back to having put skew for the S&P. And these are just a couple examples of ways that you can take advantage of what you're seeing in the skew if you disagree with it. And remember, that is the basis of all good trades. The market presents you with information, you get to evaluate it, and where you see a discrepancy between your view and what the market tells you, that is where a trade is found. The point of this video is just to give you a general introduction to the concept of skew. There are lots of strategies that get traded with this. I released a video just recently about ratio spreads, that is pretty much a skew trade. So if you wanna see that video, I'll link it in the description below and you can check that out. But generally speaking, skew is one of these things that you pretty much need to understand if you want to be a you know good options trader. It describes 50% of what you see on a chain. It's the change in vol across strikes and it tells you a lot of information. So learn about skew, start trying to observe it within your brokerage on your option chain. If you're a PA member, you can use some of our tools to see historical changes in SKU. You can see the SKU rank, similar to like an IV rank, and there's a lot of strategies that can be derived from that info. And regardless of that, if you like this video, please like, leave a comment. I'm happy to answer any questions you have, and we'll see you in the next one. Happy trading, everyone.